Mayor Jim Watson is headed to the mall today looking for ideas for the 2014 budget. Yes. Watson will be holding six budget outreach consultation sessions at area shopping centers over the next week. Today, the mayor will be at the Rideau Center from 1015 to 1215. And joined now by Ottawa Mayor Jim Watson. Good morning. Morning, Jeff. Uh, why consultations uh, instead of public hearings? Well, actually, we're, we're going to do both. Uh, this is pre-consultation. We haven't established the budget. The budget will be tabled in, in mid-October. And so what I thought would be an interesting idea is to go out to where the people are, because sometimes we just expect everyone to come to City Hall. So we're going to do these uh, mall consultations, because a lot of people go to malls, mm -hmm. a chance for them to come up to me and speak to me personally, one-on-one, -on -one with their ideas, aspirations, frustrations with the city, uh, their ideas on how we can save money, where we should be spending money. And then we will go out once the budget is tabled and have the regular consultation meetings, both in the community and then back at City Hall. So there will be lots of consultation, but this is something a little different to try to reach those people who don't normally show up at a committee meeting. Okay, uh, what types of ideas are you expect or hoping to hear from residents? A combination, you know, we don't want to just hear ideas of how to spend money, that's easy to do. We need to save money too because council is committed to bringing the tax rate uh, at or below 2%, which would make it the lowest tax rate in seven years. So that's something positive, but in order to get to that, you're going to make sure that you have both sides of the ledger sheet. You can't just spend money, you've got to save money too. So I'll give you a quick idea, a couple years ago, we heard a lot about the condition of the roads, particularly in rural Ottawa, and that's when we brought in Ottawa on the Move, which is a massive project to rebuild and reconstruct our roads. It's very inconvenient for passengers and drivers, but it's getting the job done in terms of making sure that we have decent roads for bikes, cyclists, and pedestrians. What other ways, if they can't attend these meetings or uh, in the malls or the regular consultation meetings, what other ways can residents submit ideas? Well, we're going to have on September 17th at noon, we're going to have a moderated session where people can uh, email me messages, moderated by CTV's Graham Richardson. Uh, also, we have an email uh, budget uh, item, which is budget2014 at ottawa.ca, or they can contact their city councillor, or they can come to one of these mall sessions. They're going to be at St. Laurent, Place d'Orleans, Bayshore, Billings, uh, Rideau, and Carlingwood. So, I'm not going to be there shopping, but I'm going to be there shopping for ideas. <laughs> Hopefully some out-of-the-box ideas uh, for residents. That's you know? what it's all about. That's what it's all about because all of the wisdom, believe it or not, doesn't reside at City Hall. I know you find that hard to believe, <laughs> Jeff, but we need to get the public to have input on their budget because at the end of the day, uh, it is their document and, and they pay for the services that we provide. Ottawa Mayor Jim Watson, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Thanks, Jeff. In other news, Gatineau's mayor says he is shocked to hear about collusion involving construction contracts in his city. An engineer told the public inquiry into Quebec's construction industry that construction companies in Gatineau participated in an elaborate price-fixing scheme to maintain profit margins. Marc-André Gelina testified that between 2002 and 2008, his firm colluded with three competitors to fix prices and rig bids for city contracts in Gatineau. Mayor Mark Bureau says steps are being taken to ensure corruption stays out of city business. John, I have a new, uh, we'll say, a new person uh, in a few weeks. He's he going to check uh, all the system to, to don't have collision system like this in Gatineau. Bureau adds no one at City Hall has been implicated in the price-fixing scheme. An Ottawa man has filed a human rights complaint against the Nepean Redskins Football Club. Ian Campo wants the Ontario Human Rights Commission to order the National Capital Amateur Football Association to change the name of all Redskins teams in its association and scrap the logo. The team has been known as the Redskins since 1981, but Campo says he wants a change for the sake of his five-year-old daughter. You know, they're legitimizing it for children on, on, on the football field. So what's going to stop them from going and calling my children Redskins on, on, the, on the playground? Campo says two lawyers approached him and offered to take the case to the tribunal for free. The child believed to be responsible for the death of six-year-old Lee Bono will never face charges. Bono was found injured in a wooded area last month near a Saskatchewan First Nations Community Centre. The RCMP says they believe the suspect is under the age of 12 and is too young to be charged. The boy is now in the custody of social services and is being assessed. A child under the age of 12 commits an act that uh, if the child were over the age of 12 would constitute an offence under the criminal code. That child is deemed to be in need of protection under the Child and Family Services Act. And so that's the response from this point forward.
The Saskatchewan government has asked the province's children's advocate to review the case in hopes of preventing similar tragedies. One month after being sentenced to life in prison plus 1,000 years for holding three women captive, Ariel Castro is dead. The 53-year-old Cleveland man was discovered hanging in his prison cell last night. Castro pleaded guilty to 837 charges for kidnapping, torturing and holding three women hostage for a decade. A state correction spokesperson says Castro was in protective custody and checked every 30 minutes, but he was not on suicide watch. U.S. President Barack Obama has arrived in Europe to continue his push for support for military action in Syria. Obama touched down in Stockholm this morning where he will meet with Sweden's Prime Minister and leaders from Finland, Denmark, Iceland and Norway. This is the first bilateral trip by a U.S. president to Sweden. The president will then travel to Moscow for the G20 summit where a possible military mission against the Syrian government will be on the agenda. In London, the talk is all about a new skyscraper that's already made a lasting impression in a way no one saw coming. The building has been dubbed the walkie talkie for its unusual design, but that's the least of its architectural problems. CTV's Ben O'Hara Byrne has the story. London may be filled with hot properties, but nothing compares to this unfinished 37 story office building. For a few hours a day, sun rays reflecting off its glass exterior turn a tiny patch of the city's financial district into a furnace. I've never felt heat like this. I left stupidly left my bag out. And you probably see, so this is actually, it got up to 92.6 degrees. That's Celsius. That's Celsius. Hot enough to melt car parts, including on this Jaguar, damage bricks and mortar, even fry an egg. Staff at this store thought the front carpet had caught fire. The smell of burning can tell, and we looked back, there was a carpet on the corner front, front door, and we realized it was on fire. It wasn't on fire, it was just a small coming out of it. The building's concave shape makes it like a curved mirror. Sun rays hit it and are concentrated into a hot spot below, producing blistering heat even when the temperature is in the low 20s. Well, I am quite surprised because obviously I would have thought people would have actually looked at this. This is quite a well-known phenomenon. It's not something that you couldn't really plan out. It has happened before, including at this Las Vegas hotel. But those behind the $325 million project in London say they were in the dark. As with all these uh, complicated buildings, we did all the, uh, the testing, we did the uh, computer analysis, and uh, this has just occurred. We never anticipated it. As developers vow to make the matter a priority, the short-term answer at least is to restrict parking on parts of the street. And as tempting as finding a free spot can be in central London, today at least, no one dared defy that ban. Temporary scaffolding will soon be put up to shelter the street below. Longer term solutions may include a chemical film on the glass to diffuse sun rays. But for now, a little piece of the city finds itself caught in a very uncomfortable glare. Ben O'Hara, CTV News, London.